done, and I worked with you last week at some point. Um, I don't exactly remember everyone's name, so can I just really quickly have you guys go around and say your names? Starting over here. Angel. Angel. We were doing, we were learning about um, McDon the new McDonald's that they were thinking about opening up. You guys remember that? Yes. Yeah. And uh, you guys read an article about it, and you had to come up with your, your own opinion based on what you thought about the new McDonald's. Do you guys remember that? Yes. Okay. What do you What do you remember about that McDonald's? Yeah. Right. We're gonna have that, um, that that's one of those features. Yeah. So all these cookie fries. Uh huh. And Jeremiah. They were gonna have they were gonna have arm chairs. Uh huh. Yep. So things to make it really comfortable. Okay. Let me ask you guys another question. Um. Well, do you guys remember what some of your opinions were? What were some of the oh. opinions that you guys had based on that article? So you guys were prompted on whether you thought this McDonald's was a good idea, right? Oh yeah. Okay. What were so? What were some of the opinions that you guys had? Uh, yeah. Okay. One of our opinion was about the fried movie that has too much salt in it and like oil and stuff like that. We got the rest. That's right. And yeah, a lot of people were talking about how the, how they thought some of the things might make people kind of unhealthy. Right? And how that kind of thing might lead to obesity. Did anyone think that the McDonald's was a good idea? Yeah. I remember a couple people um, thought unlimited fries might be something they would like, right? So those, that's an example of writing your, about your opinion. And today we're going to take that one step further, and you guys are going to write something called a claim. So a claim. Um, first of all, raise your hand if you kind of understand what I mean when I say claim. Okay, that's fine. So when I say claim, I'm talking about an opinion. It's kind of another way of saying an opinion. It's just that when we're doing a writing, a piece of writing, we sometimes refer to it as a claim because it's something that you can trace, you can find, and if you were to read a claim, it would be something that you might be able to, you should be able to underline, okay? So it's really just another way of saying your opinion. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna have you guys all take out a notebook, your writer's notebooks, and I want you to copy down the definitions as I write them down. The next word you guys are going to need to 
mom is evidence. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys know what that is. Raise your hand if you know what evidence. You know what I mean when I say evidence. Sienna, can you tell me in your own words, what is evidence? Evidence is something that supports your idea. Can you say that again a little bit louder? Evidence is something that supports your idea. Okay, good. Anyone else have a different way of saying it? Tools you say tools you use to identify? Do you mean to support yeah. like an idea kind of? Okay. So I'm gonna go with um, the first one here, which was they support your ideas. So evidence supports your idea. Or in our case, we might use evidence to support our claim. So I'm going to put supports your ideas or claim. So I have an image, a 
what that might look like. Okay. You can get a concussion from um, falling and hitting your head. Or you can also get a concussion from playing sports and getting your head hit. Okay, there's many ways. So it's when your brain gets injured because you get hit on your head. Concussion. Oh, injury. So when you're done with the definition, just put your pencils down like Jenny's done, so I know to move on. I'm going to move on. Um, you can always go back and finish the definitions later. So the next word is neuro, neurocognitive. Neurocognitive, which means dealing with the brain or the, or the functions of the brain. Neurocognitive. Moving on. The next word is radiological or taking pictures of the organs. Ooh. Yeah, raise your hand if you've ever had an x ray. Okay, so then you guys know that there's machines that they can use to take pictures of the insides of our bodies, our organs. You can also take a picture of someone's brain, like this. So these are called radiological type of images. word up here is impairment. Impairment, being weakened or damaged. So if I, um, if I go to the eye doctor and they put eye drops in that make my pupils really big, I might have a vision impairment because my vision is weakened for the moment. 
impairment, being weakened or damaged. guys finish up writing your definitions down, I'm going to pass out an article. Um, and then we're going to read it together as a class. Any questions about any of the definitions on, on the board? Here. We're going to read through the article together, and then um, as you guys are listening, I'd like you to write the gist of the paragraph, of each paragraph on the side or on the margin. Have you guys done that before in this class? No. Okay. So that's what your pencils are for. So everyone, looks like everyone has a pencil. So you're going to listen to one person reading it out loud, and as they read, I want you to write kind of the main idea of what you're reading on the sides. Yep, you can also um, circle or underline main points. That's another way of doing that too. But I do want you to have something in the margin showing what the paragraph means. Okay? All right, so who would like to volunteer to begin reading? Uh, Jeremiah. Read the title? Sure. Don't let it kids play football. Sacramento will be known since 1964. That yeah. cigarette smoking is not going to your health. We know for more than 40 years that all alcohol is in the developing brain. We know some stuff. Mid 70s that absolutely cause cancer and other serious diseases. Knowing one of what we know now, we do not see more and kill these spaces like airplanes. We have passed on to two children for two or three years ago. And we did not use assholes at all and engage the products. As we become more into lecturing some talking students and advanced with greater and broader access to information and knowledge. We have given up over purposes in the name of safety and quality. That is accepted when it, it comes to sports. From the past... Okay, I'm Jeremiah, I'm going to stop you there. Uh, can someone tell me in the first paragraph, what is the gist or what's the main idea? Um, um, so goes for um, What about them? That they're, 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 they're harmful to you. Mm -hmm. And what else? Um, so smoking and drinking alcohol and that and drinking. So we know, yes, yeah, so we've learned over the years that these things are bad. And so we don't, we make, we've made certain rules about them, right? So, so I want you guys um, to write something in, on the side of your, of that paragraph. We've learned that things like smoking and drinking alcohol can harm us or are bad for us. And so we make rules for, about them or we change certain laws. Um, I see someone using a highlighter. That's a great, and also a great way to underline or to mark what the main points are. Keep in mind as we continue reading that we're looking for the point of view of this writer. So we're looking for their, their claim. Um, all right, Jeremy. 
Jeremiah, would you continue to read, please? Mm -hmm. With the past two decades, it has become clear that repetitive blows to the head and high impact contact sports like football, eye hockey, legs, material sports, and boxing place athletes at risk of permanent brain damage. There is even a Hollywood movie concussion throughout this Christmas day that dramatizes the story of my discoveries in this area of research. Why then do we continue to interact with no need to explore the opportunity to do this? If a child is Okay, Jeremiah, you can stop again. Thank you. So it's, he's saying, why then do we continue? Continue to intentionally expose our children to this risk. So I want to ask you guys, first of all, what do you think is right in this article? Uh, oh, I think, uh, yes, right here. Okay, his name is Bennett Amala, but who, who do you think he is? What kind of person do we think he is? Who do you He's probably a writer of some kind. What else do we might we know about him? He's a scientist. That's interesting. What makes you think that? Because he knows a lot about the brain. He's talking a lot about the brain. So it's probably true that he's a scientist, right? OK, good. Um, what is the main gist of this paragraph? Yeah. Um, maybe just the the third paragraph. Uh huh. The one we just read. Maybe just the. He's talking about uh, sports and other things back to your head, like like football, ice hockey, mixed um, to our boxing, like stuff like that. Uh huh. Do you guys all know who Muhammad Ali is? Yes. 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 You know what what recently happened to him? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Does anyone know why? No. Great concussion? Um, oh. So not exactly one great concussion, but it's most likely that something, that it had something to do with the fact that boxing is a high impact sport and that you get hit on your head a lot and that can cause a lot of damage to your brain. So that's kind of what this article is about. All right? So I want, I want to keep reading the article. Would someone else like to, um, Read. Okay. And then I thought, voice, please. If a child who plays football is subjected to events, events, radiological, radiological, and neurocognitive, neurocognitive students during the season and several months, several months after. There, there can be um, evidence of brain damage of a little level of brain function. Even if there were no documented docu documented concussion. Concussions. Concussion or report symptom. If that child continues to play over many seasons, these cell um, cellular injury accumulate accumulate to cause unbearable brain damage, which we unknown how by the name cross Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's a big word, I know. Or CTE. A disgust that I first this um, that's known in 2002. Okay. So there's a lot of big words in there. The underlying idea is that. He has this. This is a, a doctor or a, um, a scientist who studies people's brains after they die. And 
he's worked with a lot of sports um, or athletes after they died, and so he, by looking at their brains, he discovered that part of why there was they were dying is because of something called CTE, which happens when you're a professional can happen when you're a professional athlete and your head gets hit a lot during your your sport. Um, okay, so we're gonna stop here and. I want you guys and partners to, yes. Okay, so for the last four minutes until your break, I want you guys to turn to your partner and uh, write down the gist in each, in the margin of each paragraph, because I can see not everyone's done that yet. So can you guys turn, turn to someone next to you? I think everyone's next to someone except Sienna. So Sienna, maybe you could come up and um, join this group up here. Maybe you three can work together. Okay. Also, guys, in your part with partners, underline words that you don't know, and maybe the two of you can try to figure out what those words might be. Just up to where we've read so far. Thank you. 